anatomy, function, and dysfunction of the rhomboid muscles. The rhomboid muscles lie underneath the trapezius. The rhomboid muscles connect the scapula to the vertebrae, so it is really helping to hold the scapula close to the thoracic wall. The rhomboid muscles get their name from their combined shape, having the shape of a rhombus. The word rhomboid means a diamond or a kite-shaped object. The rhomboid minor. It arises from the nuchal ligament and the spinous processes of C7 and T1 vertebrae. It inserts into the medial border of the scapula above the insertion of the rhomboid major muscle. The rhomboid major. It arises from the spinous processes from T2, T3, T4, and T5 vertebrae. Insertion. It inserts into the medial border, which is the vertebral border of the scapula, from the level of the scapular spine to the inferior angle of the scapula. Here is a diagram that shows the insertion of the rhomboid minor and major in relationship to the spine of the scapula. Here is a line parallel to the spine of the scapula, and here is the line of the separation between the two muscles. Above this line inserts the rhomboid minor, and below this line inserts the rhomboid major. Action. The rhomboids adduct or retract the scapula by pulling the scapula towards the vertebral column. It works with the elevator scapula to elevate the medial border of the scapula. It also rotates the scapula downwards with respect to the glenohumeral joint. The rhomboids participate in proper movement and the stability of the scapula, which is critical for shoulder function. Nerve supply. Dorsal scapular nerve, C4, C5. Clinical entities related to the rhomboid major and minor muscles. Brachial plexus injury. If the patient has a brachial plexus injury and the EMG show evidence of an intact signal in the serratus anterior muscle which is supplied by the long thoracic nerve and also an intact signal in the rhomboid muscles which is supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve. This situation indicates that the lesion of the brachial plexus is post-ganglionic injury which will have a better prognosis than the pre-ganglionic injury of the brachial plexus. Definitely, the pre-ganglionic injury will have a poor prognosis. The pre-ganglionic injury is associated with Horner's syndrome, ptosis, meiosis, and hydrosis, due to disruption of the sympathetic chain. There will be also medial winging of the scapula due to loss of the serratus anterior and the rhomboid muscle function. The inferior border of the scapula will move medially. In the preganglionic injury of the brachial plexus, there will be loss of the muscle function of the levator scapula and rhomboid muscles. Basically, we will examine proximally the muscles that are innervated, root-level motor branches, the nerves that are coming out of the roots. Detecting if the brachial plexus injury is preganglionic or postganglionic injury is important.
A normal paraspinal muscle activity on EMG indicates a postganglionic injury, which will have a good prognosis. Another entity that is popular is rhomboid trigger points, muscle pain, and tightness. Usually, the patient complains about superficial pain between the shoulder blades. Patients describe it as an ache or they feel knots. Here is a diagram that shows the area where the patient feels the pain in between the shoulder blades. The pain is closer to the scapula than to the spine. The pain occurs especially at rest and movement does not influence the pain. The patient also may feel grinding or snapping or a crunchy noise during movement of the scapula. And in this case, you need to rule out a scapulothoracic impingement or a snapping scapula. Other muscle trigger points can be associated with rhomboid trigger points, such as pectoralis major, levator scapula, and trapezius. So what aggravate the condition of rhomboid trigger points? Painters that holding their arm above the head for a long time. Bad posture, like the people that work habitually in a slumped forward round shoulder position, which is a protracted position, such as in people that work on a computer or a desk job, or people that are sewing or reading. In this situation, the pectoralis, which is antagonistic to the retraction function of the rhomboids, this muscle may become shortened and overactive, and the rhomboids become stretched, trying to counteract the pull of the pectoralis. To avoid aggravating the problem, some people believe it is better to work on the pectoralis first before you work on the rhomboids because if you stretch the rhomboids with tight pectoralis muscle, this may increase the weakness and the irritation of the trigger points. So how do you treat rhomboid trigger points? You give the patient anti-inflammatory medication. You may try to stretch the pectoralis first. You may do rhomboid trigger point release. You may treat it by a tennis ball and possible injection of the trigger points. It may be really hard to tell if the rhomboids is causing the pain between the shoulder blades or other muscles that are inserted around the same area. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.